Good afternoon and welcome to the next stage of the printing of this print which we looked at in the last Moccolito um, workshop. I'm just popping that back on the press bed here. Here in front of me I have the Moccolito plate which I've been carving away at and you'll see the areas that I've retained. They're black because I, as I said last time I've left the ink on. Um, just to dry on the plate and I've carved away the areas that I don't want to print that's going to be printed on our, through the press, it can be done by hand uh, it's, you know, it's either or, I have a press to the side here so I'm going to utilise that I've been quite bold in some areas and I've taken away large chunks in other areas I've been quite detailed and what I've tried to do also is just try to emphasise emphasize the woodcut marks, you know up here these are very woodcut marks and these sort of these tool marks here because this is now a chance for the the wooden lithography the lithographic marks to start integrating and interacting with a very different form of expression and that's the woodcut what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start mixing my ink I've got various inks lined up here I'm going to go for a transparent sort of transparent petroleum bluey green is all I can describe um, so I'm just going to get some extender I don't need much I'm only got this is a literally a one-off print so hopefully hopefully it will go right otherwise I'll be refilming this with another print so that's extender out of the way uh, next we have we have a lovely Prussian blue. I'm just going to put all my blobs out. There we go. Oh, look at that. Isn't that joyous? My favourite colour possibly ever is a beautiful primrose yellow. Absolutely love it. Um, so I was going in for massive, massive scoops there. I'm used to printing quite... <laughs> quite large print so the idea of taking small small little scoops is is sometimes second nature and um, not really not what I'm used to <laughs> went in for a big scoop I'm going to add it's going to seem strange but I'm going to add a bit of red just to knock back the yellow emphasis in the greeny sort of greeniness of it all because that will um, really work well with the reds and the oranges I have in my actual print so, next is literally a dot of black. Get those out of the way. Wonderful. Now, I'm not touching my extender yet. I'm going to be mixing my colour to add to my extender separately. And it's, I'm really going for a very pale a very transparent, um, pale the wrong word, a very transparent colour here so I need very little to tint it with because what I'm hoping, and as I say this is a one hit wonder what I'm hoping is that by adding this sort of transparent um, oily green it will allow the, the glossiness of the transparent will really bring out the, the blacks of the lithograph, which is what I'm hoping. So those areas, I'll show you. These areas here, which need a bit of a bit of oomph, a bit of kick. You can see I've left kind of a, a generalised area and I'm hoping the glossiness and the darkness of the transparent will really just help lift those. Just give it that extra sort of kick. Uh, there we go. Mixing all my extender. So I say it's, it is a very transparent colour. This will be a, a, a subtle effect, but it will be there. It will give that depth. You can obviously go bolder. It depends on your print. You know, this is absolute personal preference. What I also like about extender is it adds a nice sheen. If you start building up the layers, you know, a lot of my prints have 20, 25 colours on, and by the time we've got to the end, the extender is so glossy it's like a beautiful varnish 
Okay. So that's also really nice because the lithographic the lithographic colours, unless you add a varnish to your to your print, they tend to be quite flat and matte. So adding now woodcut um, woodcut element in it, where you're using thicker inks, and it it tends to have a sort of a more weight on the paper. Again, it's a really nice contrast to work with. You can see nice and nice and sort of oily, scummy green. Bit like an oil slick spill is what I'm kind of how I envisioned it. Just gonna pop a bit more on there. Now as I say, the ink is dry on this plate, and it is dry, but what I have done is I've gone over with a clean rag and given it a really good rub, just a dry rub, no oils or anything, or spirits, completely dry rub, just to remove that top layer of previous ink, so it's nice and clean to receive its new ink. Now again, ideally, you have a roller whose width is bigger than the, um, the width of your plate, obviously in this instance mine isn't. And the reason being actually the other little roller is currently in use, so I can't um, can't use that. And as I've said before, many of you probably have smaller rollers like this, um, so it's more useful for me to show you um, with the small rollers. So I'm just going to go all the way over. And it's going to be difficult for you to pick up on the camera where the ink is going. I can see it by a very thin glossy layer so I can tell by looking at it in the light and that is the best way of me telling with this quite dark colour on very dark woodcut where my ink is. So making sure it's got a nice even coat I'll try and hold that, catch that to the light, you might be able to see some of the sheen. And what I'm trying to do is blend in any tram lines I do get, that's the, where the edge of the roller prints a more heavy, heavy line across the surface. I'm just trying to blend them in to the actual plate so it's less noticeable. And when you're working with transparencies, you do end up with having to be very careful with your tram lines because they do show. So I'm just trying to, I think I'm going to stop there. So I can see, I can hear, I can feel, I'm just checking. It's got a nice, nice covering. What we're going to do now, I'm on my press to the side of the shot. I'm actually going to be printing in the way I wouldn't ordinarily encourage you to do, um, printing paper first on, your, on the press bed and then I'm going to lay this down on top like that. And that is purely for my registration purposes, well many reasons, but what the main reason is my registration, I'm doing it by eye, so I'm going to be laying that in position on my paper and then running it through the press. Also because the pressure is applied from above on the, the roller, I don't want another emboss on this, I don't want these marks to emboss my paper. I'm really liking the very flat surface of my paper. By printing this on top like that, and my paper is sitting against the hard surface of the press bed, there's nowhere the paper fibres can go, so therefore there's very, it reduces the chance of getting an emboss on the paper, which is what I'm wanting. So I kind of do that quite a lot, I flip from printing the paper down below or on top of the print depending on what emboss I have. Right, I'm just going to align this up and this is done um, by eye so let's say this is a one-off print and I actually really am fond of this print so fingers crossed I kept this right. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that. 
any more it's going to, <laughs> I'm going to start wiggling it. So I'm just running it through the press, this might be slightly off shot, I apologise if so. No blankets. I'm just holding the wood until it's gripped by the roller and then it's going through. And I'll bring that over now. There we, I'm going to hold that up by hand, we have the next layer on, actually hang on, whoa hang on there, no your own work Mary, no, no no no, yes, no, <laughs> that threw me, there we go, now what's happened here is it's worked really nicely, the figure which was here and it was quite muffled before, you didn't really see there was a figure, it was, it was in a lot of information, has now got a sort of nice extra coating on it. There are some really lovely little details going on um, in the sort of the mesh work, which has worked beautifully. This swoosh here and this black mark up here, which were done with Touche originally on the wooden lithograph. Again, it's probably quite tricky to tell on the camera, but in person they've suddenly got this extra depth and this subtle sheen in contrast to the matte areas where I haven't printed that sort of oily green. And it's really given it another sense of depth, which is absolutely brilliant. That's, I'm really chuffed with that. Um, the registration is off by about a tenth of a mil and that's me just being a perfectionist um, but in all honesty because because the woodcut marks are quite graphic you, you don't notice it that's just me going in with my microscopic eye and actually that's that's worked really nicely that's just given the whole print the sense of depth and sense of grounding it kind of knows what it's saying now again, this is where I'm going to actually stop on this particular print that, that's had its final layer. But if you have been working Mokolito and wooden lithography, I can now clean up that, that plate um, and cut away further into it and print again if I wanted more details. So you're now working with a woodcut onto a lithograph, which is really beautiful. So I hope that's all made sense. Thank goodness we got something that I could talk about. Um, what I'll do is I'll also take a photograph of that in more detail for the Instagram feed so you can see some of the sort of detail marks. And I've just noticed as the ink's drying these sort of areas here where I had those really gestural woodcut marks there's a real subtle change between the, the sort of the, the rich black which has got the, the oil slick green on top and the area which hasn't and it's there and it's beautiful and that's something again cameras will probably find difficult to pick up on but it's just given it an extra layer, that sort of, what I like to call a full stop within printmaking. So there we go, I'm going to pop that to the side. Thank you um, very much for listening. We'll be back with some more Mokolito working with colour and further how we can take it in a few days. So thank you so far. And also just a big thank you because the crowdfunding appeal amazingly and kind of, I'm still, hasn't quite sunk in, has been successful. and. I've kind of gone beyond the target. So thank you everyone. Is that thumbs up? No. <laughs> thank you so much everyone for the positivity, the shares, the good vibes, support and everything. It will enable so much more of this, more research into sustainable printmaking, my own, you know, my own practice developing that more so I can teach it more. I practice what I teach and I teach what I practice. And just and more stuff for the community and beyond. So thank you so much everyone. And I'll be back in a few days. Have fun woodcutting.